Here are three images of wildernesses that I really like. They're all Australian. Um, I don't want to put up an image of the wilderness I don't like, which is statistics education in Australia. Um, and it's not as if uh, we've not been trying to do something. In fact, 10 years ago, we had the, the Federal Minister for Education about to fund exactly the sort of thing we're talking about today. And then through a combination of um, stupidity by the society and uh, Mr Howard, the then Prime Minister, not talking to us before he moved the Federal Minister, um, he moved the Federal Minister before we could get the funding in place. So we're trying again. Why do we need this revolution? Well, uh, fortunately, all the other speakers have talked about this issue, so I don't have to say much about it at all. Um, Australian data are, in fact, very poor about the real market for people qualified in statistics. I uh, was told by somebody at the ABS, and I don't, wouldn't regard this as an official opinion, but their feeling was that there were um, not many more jobs than there were people. The trouble is that the jobs for statisticians are not usually labelled st um, statistician. There are all sorts of other names there, but they're really asking for people who know about statistics. And uh, you heard um, Rosalind talking about the grim situation in America. Well, I think the situation here is probably worse. Um, there's probably maybe a factor of 10 gap between supply and demand. So it's not just a question of acting, we've got to act in such a way that we transform things in quite a hurry. And with all due respect to Rob and all the kind remarks he made about me, I don't think we've got five years to worry about the, to do something at school. Uh, and now, this is not an exercise in mathematics, ma um, bashing mathematics or mathematicians. However, I do have to make a few points. Um, John Tukey himself observed that statistics is, is a science. It's, it's not like mathematics. It uses maths, but so do physics, chemistry, and all sorts of engineering. But it's inductive in what it does. It goes from the specific, from the data, to more general conclusions. And in fact, you can teach a great deal of statistics without using any mathematics at all. But a lot of mathematicians don't recognise this. Um, at, at school, you have math teachers having to teach statistics, but they don't know any. Now, why don't we get um, a, a, a Greek linguist teaching mathematics? I mean, maths is mostly Greek symbols, so we can just do that. Um, and, you know, why don't you ask the, t the French teacher at school to teach German? It's just another language, isn't it? Uh, so, that's an, and I'm indebted to Chris Wilde and anti-social media for sending me this very brief quote uh, by two very distinguished statisticians, Brad Efron and Rob Tipsharani. The traditional road to statistical knowledge is blocked for most by a formidable wall of mathematics. So, statistics is a science and its lifeblood is data. Who's got the data? We haven't got it. It comes from somewhere else. So, we need to start communicating very early in the piece with the people who have got the real problems, who might be in agriculture or banking or biology or chemistry or all the other areas that were mentioned today. So, that's where the starting point is. Because it's different, it needs to be taught differently. You don't need much data to teach mathematics. But statistics needs a context. It's somebody else who's got a problem and the data, and it certainly requires um, a broader range of skills, knowledge, and know-how um, to be taught than you have to do with mathematics. People learning statistics have to learn how to listen to what the other person's problem is, and then from that, work out where statistics, where data may be helpful. You have to learn to think in terms of systems and processes. A lot of statisticians don't even think in terms of systems and processes. Uh, we heard earlier about, and this was um, Hamish, the absolute need, once you've got the results, to be able to communicate them in plain, non-technical, and actionable language. 
And statisticians need domain knowledge. Somebody else has got the problem. They're coming from a different field. We need to have some understanding of their field. Statistics needs to be taught within a more general scientific paradigm of learning from data. And maybe we need to be using the term learning from data a great deal more than the term statistics a lot less. Learning from data starts to describe what it is that we're really doing. And so this little paradigm here, uh, which you see, which is a basic paradigm, a scientific paradigm, is something which, uh, with Rob's help, um, we managed to infuse into what is now regarded as F to 10 rather than K to 10, but to the extent that the curriculum has got statistics in it, that, that, this paradigm is in there. 10 years ago, what were we trying to achieve? We had three purposes then, and I think they have the same three purposes now. The ultimate purpose is to support Australian science and scientific research, business and industrial innovation, and the education system through the availability of high quality and appropriately educated statisticians and a statistical, statistically informed population, which was a point one of the early speakers made, I think maybe Hamish. The second purpose, to ensure that Australian school children acquire a sufficient understanding and appreciation of how data can be inquired and used to make decisions so that they can make informed judgments to deal with the vagaries of life once they leave school. Once you leave school, you don't use much, most of us don't use much maths. Almost everybody is having to think statistically one way or the other every day of their lives, whether they realise it or not. And finally, so that's for everybody at school. They all have to learn something, some statistical thinking but we want to grab the more statistically able ones and empassion them, if you like. Give them the urge to learn more, to study more at university. And one of the many wonderful ideas that uh, Zhao Li alluded to was the notion that you've got all these people going into university and, and wasting uh, society's time and money by studying things like law and other things like that. When, and then the, the concept that you teach this sensational service course to those guys and suddenly I think, oh, I think I'll have a lot more fun in this area and there's plenty of money. So, you know, let's um, take the passion to universities as well. How are we going to fuel this revolution? Starting point is to develop appropriate curricula and programs. And in my view, um, K to 10 um, is not too bad. Uh, I had some involvement in that. And um, when you look around the country, that you can see that there, in most of the activities in the States, there is some uh, statistics in there. And it seems to follow the scientific program that some of us, um, uh, paradigm that some of us presented to them and so on. But uh, year 11 and year 12, the last two years, are a huge problem. And, uh, um, I, and I'll interpolate here something I learned from Chris Wilde yesterday. Uh, by an act of um, a most felicitous act, somewhere in the New Zealand government, somebody decided that, at, that the school program would, would be separated into mathematics and statistics. Is that right, Chris? Got renamed mathematics and statistics. Fantastic. Um, I think that we need to do something of that nature um, at schools now. But more than that, we need to link it up with computing. Because being able to work with data at schools means you have to have the sorts of capabilities that computing only can provide. Now, people have said, well, why don't we just call it data science in years 11 and 12? There's a good reason for that, and I refer you to this really good statement by the American Statistical Association. Data science is a very general word. Um, it, it, it includes not just mathematics and statistics, but 
to do the full um, spectrum of data science stuff, you need, um, uh, you need um, computer science people, you need people skilled in algorithms, you need people skilled in visualisation. Um, another, mis and another one of my hobby horses, big data. What does that mean? It doesn't just mean a monster amount of data. There's an issue of complexity as well, and you need a, that's something where you need a team. You can't just produce a big data expert. The expert might be a statistician or a computer scientist or a visualisation or algorithms or computing systems. You need all of those. It's a team sport. Big data is a team sport. So I would urge the working group tomorrow to think very hard about whether we can put together a really sensational statistics and computing course for the latter years of high school. And I think we have to talk to Akara very seriously and run the risk of Rob phoning me and telling me things about my parentage or whatever that, uh, no, he's never, he's never done that. Um, <laughs> we haven't got five years. Uh, we can't wait five years for this. We're just going to go so much further back. We have to somehow jump the start, I think. And maybe the clue is in the fact that it's, it's a curriculum you're talk, talking about and not how the curriculum is, um, is, ta is taught. What about at universities? Well, here's a possibility, and these are all these ideas we, we, had, we had 10 years ago uh, for, ready for the minister to sign off on. Link, when you teach statistics at university, why not link it solidly to an area of application and strongly encourage double degrees? An extra year, you get the two degrees. Where, so you do stats in biology or stats in earth sciences or stats in commerce or stats and finance, but you come out having some domain knowledge, having worked with data from a domain, not just a data set out of a textbook or pulled down off the internet because it illustrates something, real data relevant to a domain. What should be the content of statistics and computing courses in the, um, in the 21st century? Um, I refer you to a set of articles by uh, Bill Cleveland, Jerry Friedman, Des Nichols and Adrian Smith. Some of you will know all of these reprobates, some of them, some of you will know some of them, uh, where they were looking at the sorts of changes that had to take place. Now, they were from presentations in 1999, and so we're 17 years on, uh, nearly 17 years on, um, and it's, it's time we started taking notice of the 21st century. And the other question is, uh, what complementary skills need to be acquired at university, which is what something Hamish was talking about, you know, don't just produce people, you've got to produce people who are job ready. Okay, they've actually got some sort of understanding of what the, market pla of what the marketplace requires of them, so that the, uh, the companies don't have to sort of take these people back to the spare, to square one, explain that you don't spell customer with a K, really rudimentary, things like that. At the graduate level, all sorts of possibilities, but, of course, nobody to undertake them. Um, we could introduce diplomas of statistics, we could introduce um, industrial or professional doctorates, and I see Murray Cameron is here, and I think Murray can say something about that to us um, during the course of the day. Maybe there are alternative pathways to getting into, well, there are alternative pathways to getting people into statistics. If we haven't had uh, Zhao Li's approach of uh, seducing them from studying law as undergraduates, um, it is possible to get the smart graduates in. And I think over at one of the universities in Western Australia, they simply focus on getting smart graduates in other disciplines into the master's program and then um, which is, I guess, in some ways, the US style of things, teaching people statistics as graduates, not undergraduates. I think we have to cooperate regionally. Louise talked about uh, the fact that we haven't got critical mass. There's one other department you should have mentioned, which is Eastern Australia over in New Zealand, which has probably got the most vigorous statist standalone statistics department in Australasia. Um, and they've worked with that very hard. Um, so we should be collaborating with the universities near us, um, in my view, to 
say, well, you know, our university hasn't got such and such, but there's somebody over there who can teach this program. Let's put together some sort of a, let's um, advanced program um, which is, uh, uses all the talent available. And let's engage local industry in this game, especially if we go through some sort of a professional doctorate, even a professional master's program, there's the opportunity to, uh, to engage industry. Where are we going to get the teachers? Now, this is a huge worry because there are about 10,000, roughly 10,000 schools in this country. Suppose we wanted one person at each school who was statistically capable of teaching statistics. Uh, how are we going to get those in a real hurry? Um, I think that this needs huge um, innovative thinking. Um, we don't, and we, as other, other speakers have mentioned, they don't need to be maths teachers that we're drawing on. Right? John Mack, and some of you will know, long time interest in, and leader in maths education said to me a long time ago, 10 years ago, you realise, of course, that these stats teachers don't have to come from maths. And, um, well, I hadn't thought too much about it, but it didn't take me very long to realise that that was, that was right. The mathematicians haven't got any data anyway. Um, why not go off and find the people who have got the data and go and get them to teach statistics? But what sort of program would be needed to produce the teachers who could teach statistics? Um, at this stage, I feel... Uh, we, st we need to be and to start thinking that this is the 21st century. There are all sorts of technological opportunities to transform pedagogy, how things are taught, how things are learnt, the educational process. Why shouldn't our discipline be in the forefront of finding a really creative new way to be teaching large numbers of people? And this, you might be trying to teach teachers at schools, you might be trying to teach um, hordes of undergraduates um, through service courses, whatever it might be. Somehow we have to effect a step change in the number of people coming into our discipline. Um, in terms of teaching teachers, watch this next slide. Right, what are we aiming to do? We want you to instill in students a passion for the subject, exactly what Jali and his colleagues have been doing. And we want to make teach, teaching the subject joyful and interesting. There's two simple goals, right? Um, how can we do that? Well, here's one possibility. What about developing some excellent MOOC-style material, core material, um, for use in the classroom? So now we're starting to change the way we're thinking about teaching. So if you look at school teachers, how much statistics might, education might they need to start teaching statistics at school? Well, as Tim Brown told me the other day, uh, they need to know a fair bit more than they're actually teaching. Well, that's right. Uh, but the estimate, and I've talked about this to Peter Housen and others, is that if you had th 30, 30 half-hour sectors of absolutely excellent core material from an excellent presenter, coupled with 30 hours of facilitated learning by a statistician. So the role of, by, uh, the, role of the teacher then goes from being um, having to produce the material to facilitating learning around the material, plus another 30 hours of project work. Then you've got 60 hours of teaching, and maybe that is enough uh, to help any teacher who wants to teach statistics at school, so that's all the science teachers are now available, um, to learn enough to start teaching statistics subjects. At universities, you could do similar. Um, but the core material, so but you only have to solve this problem once. Rob was talking about people, collect, about the state, uh, this, this federal system that we have, um, the notion of collaboration. I keep remembering Terry Gagan years ago telling me about herding cats when he was trying to run the maths department at Sydney. Um, it must be exactly the same, but at least there are only eight cats and not, not 40 of them. Um, but there's no, they should have no rigid objection to collaborating on producing excellent core material to teach statistics uh, to teachers so that they can teach their kids. But the same approach could be used at universities. 
communicating the attraction of statistics as a career, and that was sort of behind the question that I asked Hamish, because I, we are, as a profession, possibly the worst of all possible science communicators. Uh, this is, uh, we have an, an awful word in statistics that labels us. Um, nobody, well, it puts everybody off. And we are certainly not at, at all professional about we, how we say, here are the opportunities, come to us, and so on. So we need to hire the professionals to help us communicate, help us communicate the exciting job opportunities, and we've worked with the Commonwealth Bank on that, thanks, um, and, and how, how much fun it is to learn at school and how it helps you in your daily life. Funding and resourcing. Um, where are we going to get the funding to develop the curricula we think are needed? I think initially that, that's a problem that our society has, that uh, we have to work with ACARA, we have to talk to the teachers, but we at least should be able to work out, and we have to maybe the Australian Computer Association and so on, but we should be able to map out roughly what ought to be an excellent uh, two-unit course at high school in, in the last two years. We need to look at what's already available, we need to look at from, uh, learn from the New people in New Zealand who are miles ahead of us and the American Statistical Association. And we need to see if other countries are interested in partnering to some extent. Now that doesn't uh, by any means solve our problems, but at least um, it's, it's a start. And if we can show evidence of progress, then I think uh, on our own initiative, I think we're more likely to have a sympathetic hearing from, other, other, uh, from fund potential funding organisations. So, three conclusions, and I think we're nearly back on time. The only way to affect the transformation that I think we need is on the necessary time scale is going to be revolutionary, not evolutionary. We have not got the time to make incremental changes. Something that produces an extra 50 graduates a year in Australia simply won't do it. Um, there is this gigantic gap between supply and demand. If we don't fill it, it's going to be filled by somebody else because of the nature of vacuums. And we probably won't like how it gets filled and it certainly won't help the country. And I think that uh, 21st century teaching methods and a collaborative, and which is what Louise was talking about, collaborative rather than a competitive attitude will be needed to achieve the order of magnitude increase in student numbers and teaching numbers that we that the market requires. And the final point that I wrote down in response to something Louise said is, no, it was not Louise, it was um, Rosalind. Uh, Rosalind talked about the need for uh, all these different parts of the educational system and so on to be collaborating. And so my question back to her is, who is going to provide this system level facilitation to make all of this happen? Because it, won't be the it can't be the Statistical Society of Australia. It's got to be somebody a lot higher up with a much louder voice and more influence. 